Welcome, welcome to our team call tonight. My name is Brigitte Limford, and I am so excited and honored to host this call for tonight. I know we have a few teams who all collaborate together, and it's just been an honor working with different leaders this first quarter of 2020 and working together. So that has been amazing, and it's an honor to, to get on tonight with you all. As we start, I do just want to say I am honored to be a coach and to be rubbing shoulders with all of you guys today. I am definitely emotional today. <laughs> Um, and I just want to say though, I really respect all of you guys for being on right now. And I know that there's so much going on in everyone's personal lives. And I just have so much respect for each of you for being on and making this a priority and, and leaning in right now, because I, you know, I've been listening to a lot of Brooke Castillo, um, her life coach school podcast. And one of the things that she just is saying over and over right now is that this is a time when we are needed. You know, she talks about all of the different things that are so needed right now in this pandemic that's going on. And I think of what we're doing as coaches and I personally have felt so called to level up and to do more and to just be more bold and to show up in my very best way. And I see so many coaches all around the network doing the same thing. And for you to be on this call and to say, you know what, I know this is a hard time, but I need to be on this call right now and to learn what I can to be better, to show up in a more, you know, higher elevated way for my audience. Um, it says a lot about you. So thank you. Um, I'm honored and so excited. I keep saying honored. That's obviously a, a theme for it, emotion for me right now, but to have Kim Carver on with us tonight, um, just so you guys know about Kim, he is someone, uh, well, let me give you his exact title. He is the executive director of field development and training at Beachbody. And I know he's been in different positions within Beachbody, um, but I have had the opportunity to get to know him a little bit better being a part of the coach advisory board for a few years. And one of the things that I've noticed with Kim is that he is incredible with knowing how to speak to our hearts and motivate coaches in a way that I don't think anyone else on, on corporate side really does as well as him. <laughs> he is someone that I just, I think he gets where we're at. Um, I feel that he has that experience himself. Um, doing network marketing and knows what we what we need to do and knows how to word things in a way that um, just inspires us to act and he is a husband a father of four living in utah um so let me come over here and i will turn the time unmute you kim because i made it so no one can unmute themselves <laughs> All right, I am back. I do apologize. It just kicked me off internet wise. Um, so before it kicks me off again, apologize. <laughs> I just froze, I guess, for everybody. I got a few texts, so thank you. Um, but let me unmute Kim. I don't know what the last thing is that you heard. I was introducing Kim. So Kim, if I missed anything, you can go ahead and take it from there. I'm unmuted now. Everyone can hear me okay. Yeah, we can hear you. I, I, I know, Brigida. Well, first of all, I think that was just, there was like too many accolades there. So that was just, they were like, all right, we need to stop with this. We'll just freeze you, reset this, and keep coming. And I can totally empathize every morning when I'm trying to work from home and all my kids are trying to do their schoolwork from home. There have been many, many Zoom calls that have ended on my end, just like what you just happened right there. So my, my internet bandwidth has been tested to its limits. But... Um, you, you know, I just, I want to echo what um, Brigida was saying, and this maybe is a little bit different. I think part of this is you're going to, you're kind of catching me at the end of the day. It's seven o'clock here where I'm at. I've had a pretty full day, lots of meetings with, with these lights on in my face, trying to do remote work like we do. And, um, and I think when I get like this, I just, I like to just get down to the things that I feel matter most. And, and and I look at this group and I look at all of you and kind of these little glimpses into your lives feels very voyeuristic and inappropriate in some ways. But, um, but at the same time, I, I, I just, it's, it, it reminds me of 
how fortunate we are to be where we are and who we are together. Um, each one of us playing our part, doing the things that we need to do. And, and maybe tonight, all I want to try and do is just remind you of that and just how important that is. And it might sound a little bit too aspirational, a little bit too froofy, froofy. Um, but my guess is that you've got a lot of things, um, knowing the leaders that you guys are with, that, that I probably couldn't tell you too much new from a tactic standpoint or approach standpoint. And I probably, it's probably not gonna do a lot of good. I think you probably realize right now how important the things are that you're doing. And so me telling you that probably won't have much of an impact, but maybe I can help you feel a few things that will fill your cup a little bit um, and give you that little extra energy or a little boost to maybe take some steps in case some of you maybe are a little bit hesitant right now, or maybe some of you are feeling a little bit run down. I mean, life's been a little bit different for people right now. And like Brigitte said, you guys showed up, you're here, you're on the call tonight. And, and in spite of all of those things that, that are coming at you and things that are happening right now. And, you know, one of the things that, that I, that I love about coaching and the coach community is that we are a, a group, we are a community, but we are a community comprised of individuals and our strength does come from the, 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 community that we have but the power of the community comes from the individuals the power of each one of that each person to be able to um to do the things that they can do okay control the things that they can control and do the things that they can do and you know one of the things that's happened um and i was thinking about this actually as i was just walking down the stairs so i hope this this analogy makes makes sense and if it doesn't just bear with me okay but as you know, my, my kids and I, last night, we were talking about um, some of the positive things that are coming out of our current situation. And one of the things that my 14-year-old mentioned was that it's, it's helping him um, not take, uh, appreciate things that he maybe was taking for granted beforehand. Because um, we were kind of talking about toilet paper which was kind of a funny thing we were joking a little bit about, right? And beforehand, we never thought much about toilet paper. Toilet paper just kind of appeared and we needed more, you went and found more, right? And it wasn't until recently when dad was kind of like, hey guys, we need to start being careful with the toilet paper until we can track some down. But anyway, we were talking about these, this, this concept of, well, one of the things that's happening right now was some of the things that we maybe take for granted or have taken for granted, we appreciate a little bit more. And we come to recognize um, how, how, how important they are to us. And I asked them to start giving some examples. And one of the examples that, that, that my daughter gave was just like the electricity, right? Because she had heard somewhere, you know, that you know, people getting sick and couldn't work power plants. One of her friends said something, we might not have power and blah, blah, blah. And which on one hand they were excited about because that meant they wouldn't be able to do their homework. But anyway, we talked through that. But she, she talked about, you know, the electricity, that the fact that we can just go turn on the lights and there's electricity. And so I want to think, I want to, I want to take that a little bit. It's if I, you know, behind this, I'm looking over here because there's a light switch over here that I'm looking at on my left here, but behind that switch on the wall, there is power, right? And when the power comes on, turns on the light bulb and it brings light to a room that's, that's dark, right? And it's one of the things my daughter was concerned about because she doesn't like the dark. And, um, you know, it's, so if we talk about that for a second, that power is just sitting there. It's just sitting there behind that switch. It's not really doing anything. It's just sitting there, right? The potential for it to transform a dark room is there, but that power alone just sitting there isn't gonna really do anything. And same thing with the bulb that sits on the ceiling, right? It's got the, the potential to bring light to a room, um, it's, but it's just sitting there, right? The bulb alone is not gonna do anything. The switch sits between the two. Switch is what sits between the power and the bulb, and its job is to, to release the power to that bulb and light the room. This is a basic electronics conversation for everybody as well. You didn't know you're getting a double dose tonight, right? And so, so the, the, its potential is to release that power, but if it doesn't do anything, it just sits there, right? So what makes all of that happen? Well, someone deciding that they don't want, to be, want the room to be dark anymore. It's my daughter who doesn't want to you know, sleep in the dark room or taking action to go over and flip the switch and unleash that power um, that brings light to the room. So what does that have to do with kind of what I'm trying to convey here? Well, 
even before all of this, okay, that we're current, our new normal for the next little while, um, we know that people were often walking around wishing they could change things for themselves, wishing they were living a healthier lifestyle, wishing they had maybe more control over how they ate or how much they moved or wishing things were better financially for them, right? They're, they're, they, there was a lot of things in many ways we can think about. It, it was kind of like that part of their life was like in a dark room. And, and I think there's probably even more uncertainty now um, in the world right now, right? At least for the next little while as people are trying to figure this out. Um, e even with more people um, hurting uh, their health, as they struggle with, you know, interrupted routines, higher anxiety, in my case, the close proximity to my pantry. When I was in my office, I never used to have it that close. I don't know how my wife does it. If it was just here all day long, <laughs> I'm already in trouble with that, right? Uh, or just like I was, you know, just things are just different right now. And, and there's, there's struggles. And you can see people, we can see it struggling in the numbers. We can see it struggling in the number of people that are coming to us and looking for solutions on our platforms and things like that. More people are finding themselves, to use this analogy, in, in these dark rooms. Um, and I think that you probably know some of these people. I think you probably notice some of these people. I've noticed some of these people. I've noticed myself sometimes with some of these dark rooms in, in me. Um, but I believe, and I think that you believe, that uh, everyone has the ability within themselves to bring light into these dark places. Think about these bulbs, right? They're not, we're not helpless, they're not helpless. They're not without that power, right, that I talked about, like that's just sitting behind that switch. They just need someone to help them flip that switch. Um, helping them flip that switch that empowers them, right? To, to make the changes they want and get greater control. And as a coach, you know, one of the things I think sometimes that, that we want to be able to do is we want to be able to switch that, flip that switch for people. We want so bad to be able to do that for them, but we can't. We can't flip the switch. We can't make them do that. <clears throat> but there are things that we can do. And right now, there are some things that I think that we should be doing. The first thing, well, let's just talk about two things. And I've talked about these quite a bit on some coach calls lately, because I think that right now, that really what we do can be boiled down to some key things found here. Two things to do to help these people flip that switch. Is first, you can show up. And for some of you, that's, that's where you're at, and that's going to take a lot of courage. And I don't know why I'm getting emotional about this, but that's going to take some courage. Your life got a little upended. Maybe you're like me a little bit, and anxiety monsters kind of creep up in you. And the, and the result of that is sometimes you just want to pause. You just want to hunker down. You just want to wait till things get back to normal again. And, and as a result, you don't know how, what to do. Sometimes those things that used to feel so clear aren't so clear right now in terms of what you should be doing. And so the challenge to you is just to show up. Just show up every single day. You show up for yourself first. Show up for the people that are watching you, your kids, your family. You show up and you take care of yourself. You do a program. I don't two or ten rounds. Do bar. Do MM one hundred. Do a do a program, not just a random workout, but do a program. And commit to yourself that I'm going to show up for myself. I'm going to follow a nutrition program. I know that I love to eat handfuls of cold cereal, and now they are mere feet away from me on a daily basis, but I'm not going to go do that every single day. Have that discipline to, 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 to show up for yourself. You can do that. And the interesting thing is, as you start to do that, or as you keep doing it, for those of you that are showing up, okay, your example the power that you have within you, you flip that own switch and that power comes out and that light comes out inside of you. And, and the people that are seeing that, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to say, hey, your gym's closed down. Come do my virtual gym. You don't have to say that. They're going to see you showing up, see you doing those things, see you finding a way to navigate through this solution. You're going to see that and that light is going to come out of you and they're going to understand what that means. Okay. And, and an interesting thing that happens, you guys, is that as you do that, people will start to notice more and more. And if you haven't shown up for a little bit, just start showing up. 
Don't think about it. Just start showing them. Be that example for people, okay? Because they'll look at it and they will say, well, because it's possible for them, maybe it's possible for me, okay? Um, maybe I can figure out a way to do this. So show up. That's the first one. The second one is, and this one I think comes really easy, comes easier to coaches. Sometimes coaches are really, really good at helping other people and really, really bad at helping themselves, okay? Um, and, and I don't mean that negatively. I just mean that they tend to put people over themselves sometimes. And I don't think you need to because the, but the second one is that to, to believe in people and to help them bridge the gap of believing in themselves enough so that they take action to flip that switch on their own. That's another way you can help them. Okay. Showing up first helps them, inspires them, motivates them, increases their own belief that they can do it, and then you believing in them. Now, that sounds really, really, really ambiguous. So let me give you some specifics of what I believe, what I mean when I say that you believe in people. It means reaching out to them and showing genuine interest in them because you know that you can help and that you care. It means reaching out to people and not, maybe don't even bring up Beachbody, just check in on them, see how they're doing, talk to them, engage in them. A lot of these people need that right now, okay? But as you're talking to them, you're having conversations with them about the benefits, and it might be the benefits of jumping in your group. Maybe it is something they're struggling with eating at home. They're struggling with you know, being active again. They're feeling anxiety. They're feeling depressed, and we all know that physical exercise helps with that. Maybe they're just struggling with a sense of community. They're feeling very isolated right now. Groups are a great way to do that. You've got solutions, so offer to help those things. Offer to help them, okay? It, it means you being the one to, to help them through the, the questions they might have or concerns they might have. It, it might be you believing in them enough to help them push through those convenient excuses that they sometimes have always fallen back on and why they can't because you can be the person that can help them show well, why they, they can't believing in them means that you're willing to take a little bit of a leadership role. Um, it's hard to be a believer in people sometimes, but that's what you do. And that's what we do. And I think right now there's a real opportunity for that. And, and, and that's one of the things as we're going through this that I want you to, to talk, to think about. Okay. The world needs that right now. It needed it before, and it really needs it right now. We, we don't have, we, we shouldn't be, what did Carl, how did Carl say it? We need to be focusing on how we, we need to empower people, not cower right now. We need to be stepping into that right now. Um, they need more, and this is a great, this is one of my favorite phrases right now, is they need to be, have more light bringers in their life right now. You have the ability to bring light into people's life, related back to this analogy of bringing light into people's life. They need more of those light bringers in their life right now. They need more people to have the courage that keep showing up and helping people, looking to flip their own switches to ignite their own light. And that's something that's very, very um, contagious, if you will. And I'm gonna give you a couple examples here, if I can, to maybe help you illustrate this, because I know you understand this, but I just want you to, to appreciate, because I know there are some of you that are sitting there and you're like, rah, rah, Ooh, ooh, way to go, Kim, get it, okay? But you're not really feeling like this applies to you, but it does. It does apply to you. There are people that surround all of us right now that can benefit, that need our, our everything that I'm talking about tonight. I don't need to go into details about this. I'm gonna tell you about, about a couple quick examples of this. So um, last year, um, around the holidays, um, I live, where I live, it kind of butts up to a, a very kind of a large mountain. And this mountain overlooks this big valley. And I was driving home one night from um, my sister's house. We did some, some things for, for the holidays. And I looked up on the side of this mountain and, and I saw these, it looked like this star was just floating. Because at night, the mountains were, were dark, they were black, right? It was kind of an overcast sky, so there wasn't much, much moon on it. And so against this very dark backdrop of the mountains, there were these lights, and it looked like it was just floating. And I was like, what is that? Is that some kind of UFO? What, what is that up there? And as I got closer, I realized that somebody had gone up there and, and put like in probably 100 to 200 feet long strips, like lights that formed like a star. 
and and no one knew who did this it was just this these lights that just shone on the valley every single night well the week before the week week and a half before for christmas um in our community here a young boy was crossing the street and was hit by a car and killed and it was a pr pretty big deal um and then the next day after it had happened, all of a sudden on this star to the top left, there appeared this other light that kind of changed colors. And the gentleman who put the star up there finally came forward and he said that that star was to represent this little boy um, so that his parents and the community could remember him during the holidays. And um, it was an interesting thing what that one act did to everybody. Now, this man who did this actually is my neighbor. I didn't even know this. Okay, He's my neighbor. And I talked to him about this, about why he did this. And so it's interesting, I should keep saying this, is after he did that, um, he's done this a couple times since then. Um, he put a bat up on the mountain for Halloween. Um, he, this year, he did, he did the star again this year as well. And just right now, during all of this, he just went up um, uh, last week and put a shape of the state of Utah, where I live, and a little heart in the middle of it, because we're all home right now, and that kind of shines over the valley. And he shared that that was um, to kind of help us remember, you know, the community and what we are together and everything. And I asked him one time why he did this. You've got to know about this guy. He, uh, he and his wife adopted a um, a... A little girl from China who was blind and had mental disabilities out of an orphanage and they're just good people and he he said to me he goes well the first time I did the star was just was something that I wanted to do to just celebrate the holidays and he goes but when I did that one little star for that boy he goes I did it because I hurt so bad I needed to figure out a way that I was trying to help and bring comfort to that family that I didn't know and he goes and now it's become something where I, it, it, I know it helps people. It, people look forward to it. It's something I can do, and it makes a difference for people. And, and it does. One man, one gesture, bringing light into the lives of people. Um, I'm going to tell you another, another story because this, I haven't used that phrase, light bringers, until I was thinking about this call. I've sent, I haven't used that phrase until I was thinking about this call since the last time I used it was, was a few years ago. And it happened at uh, my oldest son's graduation from high school. My oldest son has special needs. And some of you that know me know a little bit about Caleb. Um, but he's fairly severely affected. And high school for him was very, very a, a good thing um, because he had a couple people in his life that really befriended him in a good group that that really took care of him and made him feel special and loved. And so a few years back when we were um, at his graduation, um, I remember I, I was it was really tough for my wife and I um, because this represented a real changing point for Caleb when a lot of these friends were going to go on to do their lives and Caleb wasn't going to be able to go with them. High school had kind of brought them apart and now that was ending. And I wrote a post um, that I want to read to you guys um, to kind of to read this because it it it's when I use that word light bringer for the very first time. I actually didn't know other people used it before this, but it kind of describes some moments. So I'm gonna share a picture with you real quick that I used in that post, and I'm gonna read this um, this post that I did. I said <clears throat> it was a very bittersweet day for Katie and me. Emotions are all over the map, from happiness to see Caleb graduate, to fear about the unknown of what the next steps will be like for him, to laughter at watching him give a signature thumbs up to the crowd and hearing all his peers yell out his name as he graduated, to sadness at the thought of this incredibly special chapter of his life drawing to a close, and to gratitude to the blessing it is to be his parents. As I sat up in my chair, a quiet face in the crowd, with all these emotions ricocheting recklessly in my mind, my gaze was fixed on the back of Caleb's head, who was sitting down below with his graduating class. When out of the blue, one of his buddies, Christian, who was sitting next to him, just put his arm around Caleb and gave him a hug. I lost it. 
a quiet, uncontrollable, ugly cry. I just couldn't keep it in anymore. My mom sitting next to me sees the same thing and puts her arm around me, of course. She is sobbing with me. She knows right what's going on inside of me. I stare at Christian with his arm around my son. Will these kids ever understand how much they mean to him? Will they ever know how he talks to them when he's by himself as he replays their conversations of that day over and again? Did they ever notice how his face lit up whenever they saw him and how special they made him feel with every high five or shout of Caleb from across the room? It is so hard for me to come to terms with the fact that the time has come for Caleb's friends, his light bringers, to move on to the next chapters of their lives. And while we're so happy for them, it hurts my heart because it's been a heart that they filled with their light. And in that moment, looking at Christian and Caleb, the pain, the gratitude, the fear, the joy, all of it hits me at the same time like a ton of bricks. Things are changing. And even though each step down their paths will take his friends farther from where Caleb's path goes, we will forever cherish the moments they gave Caleb and our family these past three years. They have been his light bringers. To Caleb's buddies, please know that, that, his, that your choice to be his friend has given him a lifetime of memories and joy. You'll have a friend forever and always in him. And from the depths of my soul, I thank you. Okay, so I finally get myself in check to get through the rest of the graduation and then the obligatory pictures. But on the way home, every time I'd look in the rearview mirror, I'd see Caleb still in his cap and gown, quietly looking out the window. And I would wonder if he understood what was going on. Wonder if he was feeling even just a little of the emotions that I was feeling. Honestly, sometimes the pain of not being able to have a simple conversation with your child is heart-wrenching, and the big trans transitions in life are the hardest. So here it goes. If I could have just one conversation with him, just this once, I would have said this. Caleb, don't you worry, buddy. It's going to be just fine. Things in life change, but that's just so they can get better. I know it's scary to move from a place that is so familiar to you to a new phase in life, but that's how you grow. And that's why we're here on earth. It's all a plan of your heavenly father that he has for you. Some doors have to close so others can open. And while it's okay to look back and stare at the closed door for a bit, to remember and cherish the memories, just know that there are many incredible things in front of you. So many big things you have no idea. It's okay to feel uncertain right now. I feel all that, that way all the time. But let me tell you one thing I know for sure, buddy. From the first moments the doctors placed you in my arms until this moment right now, I've known that you're special. I've watched you overcome. I've watched you exceed expectations. I've watched you reach into the lives of people who come into your orbit and in a special way that I still can't figure out, lift them and change them for the better because you're also a light bringer, son. And while that comes naturally to you, you need to know that that's a gift. <clears throat> This was such a special and awesome time in your life, and it's hard for your mom and me to see it end. We wonder what the future holds, but if there is one thing you've taught me these past 18 years is that I can have total faith in the purpose you have here on earth, that it's in heavenly hands, hands much more capable than mine, hands that I can find comfort in having faith in. So buddy, whatever comes next, it's what should come, and it's gonna be great. Just know that my trailer is firmly hitched to your wagon, Caleb, you're my light bringer. I'm with you till the end because I can think of no sure way to see your face in heaven and finally have these face, one of these face-to-face -face chats with you. Thanks for letting me be your father. I love you. So to one of Caleb's guardian angels, I know you're there because I hear Caleb quietly talking to you when he's in his room in the quiet of night. Please relay this on to my son tonight. I need you to help me have this conversation with him, but I couldn't. <clears throat> now, that obviously is, is, is a something to me that fills me with um, purpose and appreciation. Um, but it's also always been an example to me of the power of one person to make a difference. Like, I don't know what those kids are going to do with their lives and where they go, but I will tell you that they've changed our life and my son's life. He still looks at his yearbooks with and remembers his buddies and like they're just, he's just going to see him tomorrow. The power of one person who cares to reach in, to make a difference, to talk to people about this. You guys, to do the things, and, 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 and sometimes, I, like I said, I don't know if those kids ever fully really appreciated it. But it doesn't change the impact that they had. I know Caleb doesn't fully appreciate the impact he's had on us, but he's a light bringer for us, and someday he will. And I know, I know coaches 
that you have that same opportunity to be that kind of a person to people, especially in a world that needs it right now. And it might mean that you have to, to show up a little bit more than you're showing up right now. Do it for yourself first and then do it so other people can, that you can elevate belief in themselves. And you might have to believe a little bit more in people. Let that manifest in the things that you do because that light switch doesn't flip by itself. It takes someone deciding to go and flip that switch. It doesn't happen just by good intentions or wishing or plans that never get acted upon. It actually requires action and we can, we can do that. We can be those kind of people. How cool is that, that that is our best, that is what we do. And we do it, when we do it consistently and we do it well, that's when, our, that's when things grow for us. That's, it's just, it's, it's amazing to me. And so now isn't a time for us to cower, like Carl says, it's time to empower, it's time to step forward in this, you guys. There, there, it is, it is, I am grateful. Today's announcement about Summit was heart-wrenching for me. It was heart-wrenching, but at the same time, I love to watch coaches rally and say, you know what, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do to keep to, to keep the strength of the community, keep ourselves going, to get more people involved because they need what we've got right now. And again, this might be one of those things that maybe we took some of for granted year after year. Maybe we took some of these things for granted time after time, the ability to do these things. You know what's going to happen next year when we have Summit? I cannot wait to be there. Because no one's going to take that for granted. Everyone's going to recognize how awesome it is to get in a place of 20, with 25,000 other coaches and have that experience. Just like you can take that appreciation for having this community and get people into that and involve them, bring them into it. Do it because you care. Do it because you believe. And do it because at the end of the day, you guys, you want to be those light bringers for people. Okay? And it's, it's simple. It's those actions. Those actions that you lay out that you need to be doing every single day, endow those things with purpose because there is a purpose behind them. And if the purpose isn't to qualify for success club, the purpose isn't to, to, to get points. The purpose is to help people. The purpose is to reach into their lives and to be a light bringer, to be a difference maker, to, have, to do the things necessary to build those connections, to find other people that you can build connections with and have those conversations and look for opportunities to help them, to elevate them. Because at the twilight of all of our lives, I know that we will all look back and that will be the thing that, we matter, that will matter most to us. And as a byproduct of that, I can promise you, your business will grow. And if it's done in that order, you will find joy in it. And if it's done in that order, you will be lifted up by it. And I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for you guys. And I'm grateful for the chance that I had to get on there and say some of this. I hope it made sense. I felt like I was kind of rambling here a little bit. But these are the things that just kind of been on my heart at the end of the day. I get a little bit this way when I'm tired, I guess. But, but I, I, I want you just to remember the things that matter most and, and keep those things front and center and let those things drive you to be a light bringer for people in the coming days and weeks and months and that you can go out and be that kind of person because I know you can. That's what we're all about here. Anyway, that's all I got for you. I, I'll just start repeating myself. I keep talking anymore. <laughs> Kim, that was amazing and I can't talk too much or else I'll just start crying. Um, thank you so much. And I mean, I've got my notes as well, but I mean, the biggest thing standing out to me, I've got to show up, believe in people, and just remembering those small things are bringing light to the world. So I think you've inspired us all to be a light bringer during this time and to Good. focus on those little things that we can do. So Kim, thank you so much for being on tonight and sharing your heart with us all. And thank you all for being on. You will get the recording here soon. I hope everyone has a great night. Thanks guys. Bye everybody. Thank you.